Father wants to hear your voice. Lift up your voice and worship Him. Lift up your voice and glorify the Lord. Hello, Heavenly Father, we we'll bless your name this evening. We we'll give you all the praise, we we'll give you all the glory. Have your way in the service. Let Jesus be glorified. Breathe upon us a fresh breath of life. Do a new thing amongst us. And do that which only you can do in the life of your people. Take us beyond information. Grant us understanding. And we'll pray you for divine encounters and divine experiences in the life of everyone here present. In Jesus' name we worship. Somebody alive in this house can do something for Jesus. If you are clapping for my Jesus, I know you can do better. Yes. Bless your name, Lord. Say something beautiful to the person by your right, by your left, as you take your seat in the house of the Lord this evening. Good evening, church. Welcome to your father's house this evening. And we are still in the month of faith. And we are still in the month of good report. And I believe God that you have recorded good reports in every area of your life. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's a month of good report. And if you have not experienced it, believe God to do that today. Believe God to do that this week. And the Lord will grant you an experience. 
an experience that will gladden your heart, an experience that will reflect the goodness of God. Praise the Lord. And we said in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 2, that we obtain good reports by faith. We obtain good report by faith. And that is why for this month of August, we are we are we run and we have been running a series on faith so that every person will know how to operate and how to function by faith. Praise the Lord. And we said that faith is a gift given to you by God, and God gave you faith with which to appropriate salvation. A salvation is a product of grace. And the product of grace is appropriated by faith. So that the faith was given to you to appropriate salvation. And faith also was given to you to appropriate the provisions of grace. Praise the Lord. Now, the topic of this evening's message is how faith comes how faith comes how faith comes because the bible says in the book of romans chapter 10 from verse 17 romans chapter 10 from verse 17 romans chapter 10 from verse 17 the bible says so then faith cometh Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can you give us New Living Translation of this same verse? And it says, so faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. Can you give us an amplified version of this? So faith comes by hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by preaching of the gospel that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. So the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And what it means is that there are some things you hear that produces faith in your heart, but there are some other things you hear that removes faith from your heart. So faith comes by hearing. But the other thing is that if faith comes, it also is a sign that faith can go. So there are things you start hearing, faith will come. There are things you start hearing, faith will go. So faith comes by hearing the word of God. Praise the Lord. Now there has been an argument among believers, someone that says, okay, if I believe that God has gifted me the gift of faith with which I appropriated salvation, so why are you now telling me that faith comes when I believe I already have faith? So why are you telling me that faith or faith should come when I already believe I have faith? But you need to know that there's a difference between the spirit of faith and the word of faith. There's a difference between the spirit of faith and the word of faith. Father, I pray this evening that you grant every person here understanding of the truth in the name of Jesus. So there's a difference between the spirit of faith and the word of faith. But if you notice, the word of faith comes, but the spirit of faith is in you. The word of faith comes, but the spirit of faith is in you. I'll give you an example. The way your smartphone comes, your smartphone comes with a lot of features and potentials. There are a whole lot of things your smartphone can do. Your smartphone can do a whole lot of things. A whole lot of things. But you now need to know that the potentials of the smartphone will remain a potential until an app is downloaded. It is when the app is downloaded that the app converts what the smartphone can do potentially to become what the smartphone can do actually. Praise the Lord. So what is needed to activate the smartphone is an app. And once you download some of those apps, like you know, 
the apps that helps you to chat, they call it WhatsApp, and so many of the apps, Facebook app, and so many of the things. Their smartphone has those potentials, but it needs those apps to run in that smartphone. That there are some phones that you also have that doesn't have the capacity to do some of these things we are talking about. Praise the Lord. So faith is a spirit that you have resident in your spirit. But you need the word of faith to activate the spirit of faith to produce results in your life. Praise the Lord. So if we go back to Romans chapter 10 from verse 17, the scripture says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So if faith comes by hearing, it means that what feeds faith is what is said that you hear. If faith comes by hearing, it means that what feeds faith is what is said that you heard. Because something must be said before you can hear it. Something must be said before you can hear it. So if faith comes by hearing somebody somewhere, some personality somewhere need to say something that once you hear, it activates your faith. Praise the Lord. Now, maybe because I'm in a neighborhood, I might not explain it in details. Maybe the right time I will do it. You might have faith in one area but don't have faith in another area. Because you heard something that put faith in your heart in one area, but you didn't hear the same thing that puts faith in your heart in another area. So somebody has faith for healing, but doesn't have faith for finances. Somebody has faith for, for fruitfulness, but doesn't have faith for wealth and prosperity. So you are fruitful, but you flourish in lack. But the same God that enabled you to be fruitful has also made you rich in Christ. He had made you rich in Christ. But you need faith to appropriate everything that grace provided. Praise the Lord. So if we look at it again, so he says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. When you study your Bible with the Greek rendering, you notice that there are two Greek words that the English word translated word. So when the English word says word of God, there are two different words from the Greeks that also addresses or explains or expresses the word of God. So if you study with the English Bible, the New Testament especially, you are not going to understand that this thing called Word of God is broken down into two, into two dimensions. The first dimension of the Word is called Logos. The second dimension of the Word is called Rema. But the Logos and the Rema the English word uses just the word of God for the two of them. I'll give you an example. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. But if you read with the Greek rendering, he said, in the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was with Theos. And the Logos was Theos. So, it means that in the beginning was the word. Question is, you need to know that the word expressed as Logos or explained as Logos is different from the definition and understanding of the word from the point of Rema. 
the understanding of the word from the point of Logos is different from the understanding of the word from the point of Rema. Now, there's a reason I'm, I have to teach because to have faith, you need to be taught the word of faith. Hello? To have faith, you need to be taught the word of faith. And you need to know how this faith comes. And that is what I'm explaining here. So you need to pay extra attention. Praise the Lord. So the first one is Logos. Logos is the word of God as you see in, Gen in John chapter 1 from verse 1. But that word Logos is in Greek is Logos. And what is Logos? Logos is the written word of God. Logos is the written word of God. But Logos is also the counsel of God. Logos is the counsel of God that is settled in heaven or in eternity. So if you notice in the book of Psalm 119, you hear David say that forever, O God, thy word is settled in heaven. That word that is settled in heaven is called the counsel of God. And that is what we call Logos. Logos also is the unchanging word of God. Logos is the unchanging word of God and that is why he said in heaven it is settled, it's unchanging and it doesn't change and it doesn't vary between individuals. So Logos is the unchanging word of God. But I now move a little further. Logos is the intelligent thought of God. Logos is the intelligent thought of God. That is when the Bible says that the word was in the bosom of the father. So the word that is in the bosom of the father is not just the counsel of God. The word that is in the bosom of the father is the intelligent thought of God. That is Logos. So, you need to have an understanding of the relationship between the Logos of God and the Rema of God. You need to have an understanding because there's a connection between Logos and Rema. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. My son, attend to my words. He now says, incline thy ear unto my sayings. So, there is attend to my words, then there is incline your ear to my sayings. So, the word that you should attend to is Logos. But the sayings of God is the Rema. Because Rema is the spoken word. But Logos is the written counsel of God. So you, you have to now see the connection because we're going to connect it shortly. So he is saying one thing here in two different ways. Number one is pay attention to my words. Then Listen carefully, incline thy ear, tune your ear to my sayings. So what it means is the sayings of God flows from the word of God. The sayings of God flows from the word of God. What do we mean? That the rema comes from the Lucas. The rema of God flows from the Logos. What it means is that God will never say anything any day that will contradict the Logos of God. It is from the abundance of Logos, the counsel of God, that the Rema of God is released. As a matter of fact, praise the Lord. So now, the transition here is when God utters his counsel, when God utters the intelligent thought in his heart about you 
to you, it becomes Rema. So we say that Logos is the intelligent thought of God. But when that intelligent thought is uttered, when it is spoken to you, that intelligent thought he has about you, remember, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. You get it now. And he now talks about the thought that he has for us is the thought of what? Good and not of evil. To give you what? A hope and a future. When that thought is uttered, when that thought is spoken, is no longer logos. It becomes Rema. Mm, I'm doing it. It becomes Rema. So that anytime you hear Logos and Rema, you're not confused. Because Rema flows out of Logos. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every Rema that comes from the mouth of God. So as believers who live by Rema, hey, uh, Rema is our tool of engagement. Rema is our tool of transaction. Rema is our tool of relationship with immortal house. So you now need to find out that as important as Logos is, Rema is a part of God's Logos for you. So of the fullness of his counsel for your life, he utters Rema per time, per time. So we don't live by Logos. We live by Rema. But Rema is a portion of Logos uttered by God to our hearing to change our circumstances per time. Praise the Lord. So faith comes by hearing the Rema of God. Reason. Nobody hears God and remains in doubt. Nobody hears God and remains in fear. Nobody hears God and remains in uncertainty. So what Rema does is that Amanoku vanago ingrasu kaviato ingroba kobra 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 kunde regese katum branduza. Somebody say, Oh God, open this truth for me to understand it. That from this service, I start walking by faith. Because the key to faith is Rema. The key to faith is Rema. It is the Rema of God that unlocks faith in your heart. So what is Rema? Rema is the spoken word of God that occurs within time and space. Rema is the spoken word of God that occurs within time and space. To, to us, it is Rema when it happens or when it occurs within time or between time and space. And within time and within space. So when it is Rema because it happens within time, it is Rema because it happens within space. Because in heaven, his counsel is settled. So where the Rema is needed to bring you up to his counsel is here on earth. So that is why we say when the word of God is spoken, it has to be and it has to occur within time and within space. Hey, can I explain this? Can I explain this? Can I explain this? The word is already settled in heaven that you are wealthy. But you can be moving and operating in mediocrity and penury because your rema has not come. The world is settled in heaven that you are fruitful, but you cannot be operating in barrenness because your rema has not come. Because what is rema? Rema is a specific word given to a specific individual for direction and for instruction. 
Rema is a specific word given for, to a specific individual for direction and is given to a specific individual for instruction. Rema is also a specific word given to a specific individual to address a specific problem. So Rema comes to give direction. Rema comes to give instruction. Rema comes to solve problems. Remember that Rema is a portion of Logos, which is a council that is released to you per time to address a problem, to give you direction and to give you instruction. Praise the Lord. Now, journey with me because mm, it's going to get hot very soon. It's going to get hot very soon. So, Logos reveals the general counsel of God while Rema reveals the specific direction, instruction of God for an individual. Logos reveals the general counsel of God, but Rema reveals the specific direction, the specific word given to an individual for direction, giving it for instruction, and giving it to solve a particular problem. That is Rema. Now let me give you an example between Logos and Rema. The Bible says, he that findeth a wife, eh? Find it a good thing and obtain it what? Favor from who? From God. That is Logos. So what Logos is explaining to us is that wife from God is a good thing. And wife from God will unlock favor in your life. Once you marry your own wife, it will unlock, she will unlock favor in your life. That is why, ladies, you don't need to look for a rich guy. If you are born of the Spirit of God, you carry enough favor to make any man. And already made men carry already made problems. So you need to meet the man when he's not yet made. So that the, the glory, the favor of God upon your life can make him. And when the favor of God on you makes him a king, you'll be celebrated as the queen of the kingdom. You'll be celebrated as the queen of the tribe. But when you go to an already made, you might just be one of the instruments in the house. You might just be one of the equipments in the house. So that is why sometimes I wonder if ladies don't understand this. Because this is the word of God. And remember, the word of God is settled in heaven. It's not on earth, it is in heaven. So you need to understand it. It is settled that you carry the favor that makes men. It is settled that you carry the favor that, make, that makes kings. So in, in, in another time, you are a king maker. You carry favor that makes kings. That is why every man needs to love the woman. Because there's a dimension of favor on her that cannot come out until she is loved. It is in the atmosphere where she is loved that that favor radiates out like an oil that comes upon the man that makes any man. Any God-fearing woman is a carrier of favor that makes man. That is the reason you were sent to the Master Builder Global Church. So that we can unlock that favor that you carry on the inside. That can make any man. So that is why young ladies in this place, stop praying for the rich guy. Oh God, bring to me Dangote. You don't need Dangote. You don't need the made man. You need someone that is on the path like a David. And is on the path of making. And when you meet with him, something from you, like an oil flows. And causes his establishment. 
That is what it is. And you know what? I married one. So that is why I am where I am. Because I married a woman that carried favor into my life. So I don't struggle to do what I do. Because there's a favor that comes from her. So you need to understand the beautiful ladies in this house. There's a favor on your life. And don't take it for granted again. Let that consciousness be sustained in your heart. I carry the favor that makes me. That is why you need to bring some of your friends in this church. Let them not be where they are. Bring them here because there are truths they need to hear. There are some things they need to hear and it will unlock them. So that you stop looking for things. And listen, it's not, it's not a function of how beautiful you are. It's a function of how favored you are. It's a function of how favored you are. And when you dig and mine the favor of God on your life, your man will come. Because they are in search of that woman that carries favor for them. Praise the Lord. That is why you must be on a journey of the discovery of the favor of God in your life. You must be on a journey of the unlocking of the favor of God in your life. And sometimes when you sit with your husband and you notice he's not doing well, you say, honey, go to sleep. Let me do something in this place. And you sit. Zalia. Kulia. I unlock it. Lord, it is settled in heaven that I carry the favor that makes a man. Now I unlock it. I unlock it. I release it upon him. And today I command you by favor. Begin to do well. I command you by favor. Prosper. I command you by favor. Advance. I command you by favor. Pursue. I command you by favor. Overtake. I command you by favor. Recover. Oh, that you lost. I'm not preaching relationship tonight, but some of you are. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says, maybe on Sunday we're going to dive in a little more into it so that we can unlock it a little bit more. You know, because, you know, these are the things you have to understand. So your search for the right, for whoever stops, you, you, you don't look at their pocket. You look at their spirit. If he's going in the same direction, don't disturb yourself. You have what it takes to push him. And he will get there faster. Praise the Lord. So he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and receives favor, obtains favor from the Lord. So a good wife is a favor from God. But if you notice, this is Logos. This is the full counsel of God. This is the counsel of God declared in the scriptures. But if you notice in that place, they didn't write the name of the woman. They didn't say he that find it in kitchen. They didn't say that he that find it in Manuela. So there's no name attached. It was just the counsel of God. And there's no time attached. So they say 15 February you shall marry in Kishi. So there is no time and there is no name. So this is the full counsel of God. But what is Rema? God comes from the full counsel and takes it out. And brings, what is Rema now? And brings to you and says, this is the one. And it should happen before the end of the year. And exactly first Saturday after Thanksgiving service. So, Locus reveals the general counsel of God. Rema reveals the specific counsel of God for an individual. So, Rema deals with specifics. Logos deals with the general. 
So if you understand this now, you know that the reason a lot of us have not prospered the way we should is that certain specifics about that particular area is missing. So you are still in the general knowledge of God in that area. When you need the specific knowledge of God, and that specific knowledge is revealed by Rema. Lift up your right hand and say, Oh God, reveal my Rema to me in the area of prosperity, in the area of advancement, in the area of fruitfulness. Reveal my Rema to me in the area of intelligence. Lift off your voice in the next one minute. Anywhere you need your Rema, lift your voice and declare. Reveal my Rema to me in the area of healing. Reveal my Rema to me in the area of marriage. Reveal the Rema. In the area of fruitfulness. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Watching us online. Turn it to prayer. Make prayer right now. Let it be revealed. Let it be revealed. Let your rema be revealed to you that carries the instruction for your prosperity. That carries the direction for your greatness. That carries the specifics for your advancement. Jesus, our Rema comes. Jesus, our Rema comes. Prosperity in ministry, advancement in ministry, we receive that Rema. Advancement in marriage, we receive the Rema. Progress and establishment, we receive the Rema. In the name of Jesus. So you can see what we said now that the written word of God reveals the general counsel of God. But nobody becomes a specialist with general knowledge. No, no, nobody moves by the speed of the spirit. And nobody becomes very different and unique by general knowledge. You don't become a specialist in any area of life or in any profession by general knowledge. So it is the specifics that makes the difference. So Logos reveals the general counsel of God. But Rema reveals the specific counsel of God for your life in a particular area. Rema reveals the instruction you need for progress. Rema reveals the direction you need for speed. Because it is one that you are one direction away from advancement in that career. You are one instruction away from re-engineering that business. That is the work of Rema. That is why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every Rema that comes. Because Rema comes with direction. Rema comes with instruction and Rema comes with specifics. Having said this, Rema reveals the love of God. And Rema reveals God's good intention to advance your life. Rema reveals the love, the loving heart of the Father in that particular area and his good intention. That that word that my thought for you is the thought of good. Rema reveals it in a particular area, in the area of business, in the area of marriage, and in different areas. And what happens with it is that when Rema comes, you feel the love of the Father. When Rema comes, you see the genuine intentions of God, the good intentions of God to make you great amongst men. That is why 
you must always ask forever. Long desire and ask forever. Because that is what makes the difference. And that is why Jesus said that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every rema that proceeds. And we also call rema the proceeding word of God. That word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Having said this, Lucas is highly needed in the life of all. But it is rema that delivers faith in your heart. Logos is highly needed in the life of all, but is the rema that delivers faith in your heart. That is why as you go in search of Logos, cry, pray, and ask for your rema. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3, from chapter 33 verse 3, he said, call unto me, I will hear and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. So how does God reveal it? By Rema. He reveals great and mighty things in your finances by Rema. He reveals great and mighty things about your children by Rema. He reveals great and mighty things about your business by Rema. Any day you wake up, and any area you are not doing well is an area you have not received the rema of God. Cry for rema. Call for rema. Pray for rema. That is what Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says. And that is what 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 explains. Now I'll give you a case study of this. And I will just do one. And the case study is found in the book of John chapter 9 from verse 1. And we're going to use the case of the blind man, the man that was born blind. And how Rema addressed his case. That's the case study between Jesus and the man that was born blind. John chapter 9 from verse 1. John chapter 9 from verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who, not which, because he's a person, who was born or who was blind from his birth. And verse 2 says, and his disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Because some individuals believe and, and have conceived in their mind that if wrong things are happening in your space, it's because you might have committed sin somewhere. Sometimes it's not always the truth. We'll talk about it later. So Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest. It is the rema that unlocks the works of God. It is the rema that unlocks the works of God. Anywhere you want to experience the works of God, what you need in that place is the rema of God. I repeat, anywhere you want to experience the works of God, in your business, in your marriage, in your finances, what you need is a rema. That is why sometimes, I know, sometimes you notice believers struggle with things they shouldn't struggle with. What you need is rema. I've shared this story here many years ago. God woke me up one morning and said, now I want to teach you how to travel without money. How? To travel without money. Because there are so many of us. If you don't have money in your pocket, you are trapped. The days has come. You can see flight from Enugu to Abuja is 200,000. From Enugu to UK or US or Dubai. Hmm. <laughs> but if you know how to utilize Spirit Airline, you come with your back. Pam. 
And you are off. The next place is in Dubai. Somebody say, Pastor, why are you talking like this? There are a set of people that travel with a craft called witchcraft. Eh? It's a craft. Witchcraft. They step on it. And they are in Zimbabwe. Eh? And it's not in the spirit. They travel with their body. Satan is a copycat now. He didn't create it. He copied it. We are the original owners of that. But whatever is not taught is not believed. And whatever is not believed, God does not perform. So we need to teach you to the point where you know how to travel with spirit airline. Is your rema? Is your rema? Is your rema? And that day he said, I want to teach you how to travel without money. I said, really? Now this is going to be a good adventure. The work of faith is an adventure. On a, very, on a normal, when I want to travel, I don't ask the direction. But now he is the one directing. So I have to ask the direction. Where are we going? And he said, go through this route. And he was Benin in those days. And the rest is history. That I did that trip the first time. Did it the second time. Did it the third time without spending a dime. And the first time there was this heart palpitation, you know. If anything happens on the way, how shall it be? Why are you afraid that something will happen on the way when you are in the hands of Elohim? And after the third experience, he changed it. And now said, let me show you how to travel without money and come back with money. And it was another lecture. And it happened the first time, the second time, the third time. And he now said, beyond local flights, make it international. You can't imagine carrying a wife, four children, me and wife, six, and travel by faith to the U.S. <laughs> it walk, it walk, it walk. It walk, it walk. It walk, it walk, it walk. When we were going to the UK embassy to get visa, I didn't have up to, I didn't have up to 800, it wasn't more than 800,000 in my account. And they say you need to have 2 million, you need to have 3 million, so that you need to have like 7 million. Somebody should pay 7 million into your account, and the person pays some million into your account, so that you know when they look at your account, it's robust enough for the trip. I say, is it, I say, is it visa to heaven? That I'm going for. Is it not visa to UK? I said, I'm getting it. I don't need to pay any nonsense. I said, the man will not even look at the document. I will just look at me and smile. But you know, because when we got there, you just get your biometrics and the rest of them, drop off your whatever and the rest of the things. Then they will call you later and come and whatever. And they called me and said, Are you this? I said, Yes. Are you this? He said, Yes. He said, Okay, okay, that was it. We went there a few, a few days after, or a few weeks after, I think 14 working days, and there was visa on the passport. Why look at it there? Before. Before. He said, he said, he all almighty American embassy. Nonsense. When God says yes, no man can say no. Stop being afraid of men. Look for your rema. With your rema, you have access to a nation. With your rema, you have access to resources. With your rema, settle it and get the rema. The rest will be testimonies. Men align to rema. Circumstances align to rema when you receive it. If you want to see the works of God, get rema from God and activate it. The rest will be testimonies. Wherever you are not producing results now is because the rema that gives you that result is missing. Stop struggling with might and strength and stop struggling with your human intellect. Your human intellect is too low to give you the kind of result God wants you to have in that particular area of your life. Praise the Lord. You need the rema of God. Verse 4. 
Let's roll. Verse 4, verse 4, verse 4. And I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can what? Can walk. Verse 5. As, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Verse 6. Verse 6. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Excuse me. The man is blind. You are now closing the eye all the more. What is this? This is Jesus the Jesus. Command the eye to open immediately. He covered the eye with clay. That is one of the things you need to know that Jesus sometimes does not heal one, one particular style. He has different ways of ushering healing into the life of people because he said, as I see my father do, so I do the same. So, he's responding to something that he sees. Now, verse 7. Verse 7. And said unto him, this is the Rema. And said unto him, this is the Rema. Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore. Now watch. You know sometimes blind men can always be, can be unnecessarily angry. Especially the one born blind. That when you put spittle and clay on his eyes, you now tell him to go and wash. He said, if I can see, why do I need you to pray for me? I can't see, how can I go there and wash? But he did not argue the instruction. He obeyed the instruction and went and washed and was made whole, returned back seeing. Listen, when Jesus said, go and wash, Rema, a particular direction with a particular instruction of what to do when you get there. When you get to Siloam, wash. You'll be made whole. When he said that, the angels carrying the healing power went to Siloam and waited for him. You know why a lot of you and some of us are not getting results with Rema? It's because this is where obedience comes in partnership with faith. You have to obey the instruction that your Rema came with. You have to follow the direction that your Rema brought to you. The man was given a direction and an instruction. Direction is where to go. Instruction is what to do when you get there. And when he got to the place and did what he was instructed, the healing power of God was activated. That was the case of Naaman the leprous. Go to River Jordan and wash seven times, not five times. And he went there after grumbling and complaining. Watch the first time, watch the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. And you could say, I should have started seeing signs of changes. They didn't say five times. The instruction is seven times. On the seventh time as he went down, coming up, his skin turned to like that, to that of a baby. That tells you something. Whenever your Rema gives you an instruction, obey it to the letter. Whenever your Rema gives you a direction, follow it. Your head is too small to give you the kind of prosperity God wants for you in that business. What you need is the Rema that makes the difference. You are, you are, you are not smart enough to get the kind of results God proposed for you in life. What you need is a Rema. In the Rema is the instruction. In the Rema is the direction. In the Rema are the specifics. And once you obey that instruction, the rest will be testimonies and miracles. And that was what happened to this man. Man born blind, went and washed. Who gets healed by washing? Let then all the blind men here would have been seen. Just go to that pool and start washing and your eyes will open. No, the rema was for him, not for all the blind people in Israel. So what it means is that if you notice that he went there and washed, he said, how did you get it? I got to Siloam and washed and I started seeing. Some people will run there. I want to wash like he washed. But if you didn't hear what I heard, you can't do what I do and get the result I get. 
So what makes the difference between my result and your result is what I heard that you did not hear. So don't do what I do expecting to get what I got because what I did came as an instruction. What I did came as a direction. If you don't have my direction, don't venture on my path. If you don't have my instruction, don't do what I do. You might be trapped and I will not be trapped because I am functioning by a divine instruction. That is Rema. So in these days where we copy a lot of people and sometimes we say copy the imitation. Imitate the, imitate the original until you become original. That can be the language of men. But that is not the language of Zion. To get the result in Zion you must get your rema. To get the progress and see the result in Zion you must function with rema. Don't do what others did and expect to get what they got. Because the reason they did what they did was because of the instruction and direction they had from God and that built a conviction in their heart. There is a difference between one believer's result and another believer's result. Men shall not live by bread alone. Christians shall not live by bread alone, but by every rema. The next phase of your business requires a rema. The next phase of your ministry requires a rema. The next phase of your career requires a rema. The question is, do you have that rema? Obedience to that instruction, obedience to that direction is what makes the difference. So the reason we struggle like every other person struggles is because the remedy that makes a difference is missing in our life. That brings me to something. The relationship between faith and obedience is obeying the specifics, the instructions, and the directions of Rema. How does faith come? What is the relationship between obedience and faith? Obedience comes on board. When God gives you an instruction by your Rema, and is waiting for you on the other side of obedience to give you the result that your rema carries. To give you the experience that your rema carries. That is where obedience comes in. That is where action comes in. That is where you have to obey the instructions God has given to you in the rema he gave to you. This one makes a difference between one believer and another believer. So the problem is, someone in this service is still sitting on his rema. Someone in this service is she sitting on her rema. You are sitting in disobedience on the rema that God has given. It doesn't make sense, but obeying it makes faith. It doesn't make sense, but obeying it makes faith. When you obey your rema, you walk by faith. Because it will not make sense. It doesn't appeal to the senses. It appeals to your faith and it appeals to your heart. So somebody right now is sitting on a rema that God has given. Somebody right now is sitting on a divine instruction that God gave two years ago. God gave four years ago. So what is holding your result is not the circumstances around you. What is holding your result is obedience to Rema. This is what is holding. This is what has withheld, has held back the next phase result that you desire to see that you have not seen. Some of us are sitting on divine instructions and directions and for some strange reasons we have not obeyed it. We walk in our ways but your ways cannot get you to experience the result God has designed for you. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That is Proverbs 3 from verse 5 and verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct, rema your path. He will rema your path. He will rema your path. He will give you the direction that causes transformation. He will give you the direction that causes prosperity. No wonder the psalmist said that you teach my hands to profit. Isaiah said you teach my hands to profit. And the psalmist said you teach my hands to war. So why is it that he never lost any battle? He fights with Rema. He fights with Rema. One of the days he wanted to go to war. He said, Lord, should I go? If I go, will I overcome? 
And he said, don't go yet. Sit under the balsam tree. You are going to hear a sound on top of the tree. When you hear a sound, it's a sign that I've gone ahead of you. Then you can arise and victory be yours. He fought 40 wars and never lost one. So why are you losing in businesses? Why are you losing business contracts? Why are you losing jobs? Why are you losing opportunities? It's because you fought with Rema and you need to fight with Rema because business is war and you need to fight with Rema. You need to know in your career field is war. There are men that have consulted powers and forces but you need to go there with Rema. You need to advance your career with Rema. You need to advance that business with Rema. You need to advance your ministry with Rema. If God be for us and the Rema of God is there, None can be against us. Tonight, bow down your heads and talk to God. We're going to cry out for Rema tonight. And say, oh God, reveal to me the Rema for the next phase. Reveal to me the Rema for the next level. The next level of my career. The next level of my life. The word of God declares, call unto me. I will hear and I will answer. Declare tonight, oh God, I call. Hear me tonight. Answer me. And give me my Rema. Give me my Rema. That divine direction that makes the difference. Rema for my husband. Rema for my wife. Rema for my children. Rema for my family. Rema for my ministry. Rema for my business. For men shall not live by bread alone. But by every Rema. Pray tonight like you know what you are doing. Pray tonight like you know what you are doing. He said, call unto me, I will hear and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things. Ask the Lord to show you to you tonight. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge me. Oh, and I will direct your path. Say, tonight I acknowledge you. Remember my part in this business. Give me the remember that carries the direction. Give me the remember that carries the instruction. That will change my company. That will change my career and my business. You are one rema away from the next level. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. You are one rema away from the next phase. Don't keep quiet tonight. And say tonight I unlock that rema. Oh, la casa, la gaye ingra. That word that will give me direction. That word that carries my instruction. The instruction for the next level. That word that reveals the specifics. Hey, Kobala. Hey, Ndaraba. Zolia Gabanda Legasikatuga. Ana Galagalagalagalaga. Jesus. Don't pray for it for next week. Don't wait for it for next month. You are long overdue for another level. You are long overdue for another level. You are long overdue for the next phase. Declare tonight. Let the remnant that will open the next phase of my prosperity in my career, in my company, in my business, in my marriage. Let it come to me tonight. Hey! Koviana. There's a remedy that changes your result in your family. There's a, re a remedy that changes your result in your academics. There's a remedy. There's a remedy. There's a remedy. There's a remedy. What determines our progress is not our environment, but our remedy. What that means our prosperity is not our environment but our Rema. When Rema comes, people will align to help us. When Rema comes, circumstances will be aligned to help us. When Rema comes, the ladder of success will come down for us to climb with.
declare tonight I bring obedience. Tonight I drink obedience. I make up my mind, oh God, to obey the instruction you gave. For somebody has been there for the last six months. But he can say, Lord, tonight I receive the grace to obey the instructions. I will never delay obedience to divine instructions. I will never delay it again, oh God, and my work with you. I will never, I will never, I will never. I make the commitment tonight to obey you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. To obey the instructions you give. I make up my mind tonight to obey the instructions of my Rema. To follow the instruction and the direction of my Rema. From tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand. And repeat with me tonight, oh God. I make a commitment to always obey divine instructions and directions. Lord, tonight, I ask for my rema. That rema that turns around the circumstances of my life. The rema that carries my prosperity. I make a commitment. As you give it to me tonight, as you release it to me tonight, I make the commitment to obey it. And for the ones you have given, I make the commitment tonight to obey my Rema. Thank you, Lord. From this day, I know my progress, my prosperity is guaranteed in Jesus' name. I end with this in the book of Genesis 26. Stand because I'm going to release words over you right now and there was a famine in the land apart from the famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac the son of Abraham wanted and went to Abimelech to ask for help and Abimelech said I can help you and he wanted to go down to Egypt according to mental calculation my father went to Egypt and he came and I need to go to Egypt there's a generation that goes abroad but there's a generation that looks above because that is where their help comes from this is that generation. Now we don't need to go abroad because even in abroad, what is happening here is happening there. There's a recession everywhere. So it's not about abroad. It's about above. For the good and perfect gift comes from God in whom there's no variable or any shadows of turning. And what happened? And he spoke to him and said, don't go to Egypt. Stay in the land and follow my instruction and I will prosper you. Because in the days of Isaac, God wanted, God was looking for an alternative to Egypt in the land of the Philistines. And Isaac became it by Rema. And he told him, so in the land. And I will prosper it. And he sowed and was now asking God, and how do I do it? If I'm going to sow in the land, the land is dry. Because what causes famine is drought when there's no rain because it's an agrarian economy. So nothing they plant in the field will grow and they will all die. And he said, plant. If rain is not coming from the gushers of heaven and from the windows of heaven, you can still get water from the ground. Go and redig the wells of your father. And when you redig the wells, practice irrigation. Use water to water your garden. Use water to water your farm. In the days of Abraham, they only used water to feed their animals. But in the days when there was the closing of the heavens and there was no rain, he said, use the same water and irrigate the field and it will prosper. What you need is a rema that gives you an instruction that makes the difference. And that instruction, when you obey it, you be, your result will be supernatural amongst natural men what you need is rama tonight i pray let the channels of divine communication open unto you for every man under the sound of my voice for every woman in the service online on site i command the channels of divine communication i command the channels of the flow of the rama of god to you to open in the name of jesus and let your rema be released unto you. Let your rema come upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. 
I command the gates to open. The word of God declares that you shall hear a voice behind you telling you this is the way. Walk therein and declare. Let your ears be open to hear the voice of God to receive rama from God in the name of Jesus. Encapsulated in the rama of God is the faith of God that activates your faith for supernatural result. Let your faith be unlocked by your rema for supernatural result. Beginning from tonight, in the name of Jesus, I declare supernatural experiences. I declare supernatural results in your business, in your finances, in your marriage, in your career, in your academics, in your health, in every area of your life. As you receive your rema, let your result become supernatural. And if you are sick in any part of your body, I declare you healed. Tonight in the name of Jesus. I command the gates of opportunities to open. I command the gate of privileges and new realms and dimensions to open. I command the gate of insight and the gates of resources of this state, city, and this nation and the nations of the earth. Let them open unto you. Let wealth and riches come to you. By the force of the spirit in the name of Jesus. I send you forth. Go and prosper. Beyond your widest imagination. Let the Lord guide you apart. In Jesus mighty name. And I say today. Return with supernatural testimonies. Return with miracles. Return with miracles. In the name of Jesus. Thank you father. For in Jesus name we pray. As you step out of this service, be super expectant. Anything can happen. It's just one remark that will turn the case of seven years around in seven minutes. It's just one remark that will turn the case and the stigma that will turn the rejection, that will turn the controversy of 20 years in 20 minutes. It's just one remark. Receive that rema in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now I want to say this. On Sunday, it will rain. On Sunday, it will rain. There are some of your friends that need to be here. Especially in this season, strange things are happening in this house. Because there are, there are, there are levels to what time tonight can allow. But on Sunday, make sure you don't come alone. Remember, Operation 1, win. Mobilize. Talk to your friends and nakazu them. Compel them to be in this house on Sunday. And signs and wonders will be experienced by all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember blessing Jesus' name.